So first, let's open up the wheel assembly. Now, as you can see, this wheel assembly is made up of a number of components, upright, wheel, calipers, etc. So what we want to do is hold down the shift key, click on the calipers and the disc, and this will just isolate the calipers and the disc so that we can start to work on the assembly. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a new part. So if we go to insert, component and click on new part this will create a new part in the directory tree so if we click down on this part you see it's called part 2 at the moment so if we hold down the mouse we can change it to in this case um, brake pad we give it a name so now we want to, to work on this part so let's go to edit edit part and this opens up the part and as you can see we see the, the components behind the part is a wireframe and if we click on the options menu and go to display we can change the transparency to zero so this allows us to see the part behind the, the parts behind the component we want to draw so the next thing we want to do is we want to create a sketch so click on sketch twice then pick the plane we want to draw on which is shown and now we'll use the convert entities command and by clicking on this command and clicking on the plane, all entities, lines, arcs, etc., will be generated as a sketch. Now we don't want the front section here, so let's delete this small, uh, the small fillets on both sides, and delete the uh, curve or the arc that's shown on the front. So now, if we go to convert entities again and pick the outside edge of the the break disc this edge will project down onto the plane that we're working on. And now we can put in a fillet radius. So if we click on sketch fillet and pick the two entities and give a radius of say 2.5, and this will join the two, the line and the arc and put in a fillet between them as shown. So we can do the same on the other side. And this closes the front part of the sketch. Now, if we look at the back section of the sketch, this profile that is shown is not what we want. So let's delete the the two arcs and the or the two fillets and the arc at the end, and now drag these two lines out so that we can inter so we can put the um, fillet radius at the end of them. So click on a tangent arc and pick the end of the point. The two end points is shown. So this draws a, a tangential arc at the end. Now, if we click on the add relationship button and put a relationship between the arc and the line and, you ch and change it to tangent, um, we may need to go to the view command just to show the, um, the um, relationships. So if we click on sketch relations here, you'll be able to see the tangent relationship as shown. So now let's put another tangent relationship between the arc, the arc and the line. And now what we can do is we can drag the center of this arc to be in line with this circle here. Um, or we can put a, tangent, a concentric um, constraint as shown. So now the base of the pad is now complete because it's one complete closed ent uh, entities, set of entities. So now we can use the features command and extrude the, the curve up a depth, let's say three millimeters, and this gives us the extrusion as shown. So now if we click on edit component, this brings us out of the part of the brake pad and back to the main assembly. And if we were to click on the pad again and click on open this time, or we'll go, sorry, go back to edit, um, and now let's go to sketch, and pick the top plane of the base as shown. And once again, well, this time instead of using convert entities, use offset entities. And if we offset the line or the side shown, now you notice the units are in inches because this is legacy data from the original assembly. So we can just type in um, the offset, in this case 0.3 millimeters, and do the same for the other side. We'll offset to lines as shown 
So now we need the edge of the rotor or the disc. So if we just um, move it upward slightly, we'd be able to pick that edge and this will project down, this arc will project down onto the plane uh, we're working on. So now we can put another fillet radius in between the, the line and the arc. And this time we'll give a radius of 1.5 millimeters. So this joins the line and the arc as well as putting in the radius. And do the same on the other end. We will have two fillets at the front section of the pad. So once again, we need to drag these two lines out so we can um, trim it with the outside edge. So if we use the convert entities command and pick the outside edge of the disc and now pull these two lines or extend these two lines up, we could now use the uh, trim command. So if you click on the trim entities command and use the power trim command, so hold down the shift key on your mouse, will trim all the entities it passes. So now we could extrude this profile. So this time we will protrude it upwards. So click on features, extruded base or boss. And this time we'll use the offset from surface um, option. So click the surface, the under surface of the pad and type in maybe an offset of two millimeters or on this. Yeah, two millimeters should be sufficient. We can change this later. So let's put in two units and this will offset the pad two millimeters from the, the brake disc. So we can now, um, so one last thing we need to do is make sure that we or let's put a slot on the back of the, the base here that will allow the pin um, uh, to pass through the hole and through the, the pad area. So click on sketch again, pick the top plane as shown. And if you click convert entities and pick the hole on the calipers, this um, will project a circle down onto the sketch or onto the face that we're working on. So you see we have a sketch there. So let's um, accept that. And now let's uh, leave the editing of the part. So we can do this by clicking on the edit component button. So, so this, yeah, so, okay. So let's click on edit component. So this brings us back now to the main assembly. And this time, if we go to the brake pad that we've just created and go to open, this will open the new part in a separate part, as a separate part. And we can see the it's made up of the base and the uh, the pad area. Now you see this circle. Let's change that. So if we go, that's drawn on sketch three here. So if we open up this sketch or edit sketch, and we click on the entities of the circle, and click on for construction, this converts this circle into a construction circle. So this is handy because we can now insert a slot. So click on straight slot. Um, maybe pick the center point straight slot option pick the center point for the slot and just drag your mouse somewhere out and give it a, an arbitrary size as shown so now what we want to make sure that this slot is perpendicular to the sides so if we add a relationship between one of the edges shown and the front edge of the base and click on perpendicular this will make the slot perpendicular to the side as shown now add another relation so pick the edge and the circle and this time we could put a so just do that again you have to make sure you have no other entity selected so pick the line and the arc and click tangent and we draw uh, or we create a tangent um, relationship between the line and the arc as shown so now click on smart dimension and give the dimension of the center line of the slot a, a value so maybe put in 2.5 which looks okay so accept that and now we could use the features command and extrude a cut through the base and we could change the option to true all and click OK so now we have plenty of room for the pin to move about and and allow the sorry not the pin to move but to move to allow the pin to go through and allow the base move so one thing you want to do here though is to make sure that this part um, 
Oh yeah, but before we do that, let's go now and open, edit one of the features. And if I click on this merge results option and turn it off, this will make two separate uh, bod solid bodies, bodies. And this allows us to separate the base and the pad. And if by doing this, we could apply two different materials to the base and the pad. So let's click the base and click. And if we change edit material, we could make this a plain carbon steel, for example. And we could now click on the second body, which is the boss extrude number two in this case. And this time we could, if we went to edit materials, we could give the material a, a specific material, which in this case we could make it maybe ceramic. So let's look for ceramic, which will be under not the other non-metals. And there you can see ceramic porcelain, apply and close. So we have two solid bodies of two separate materials, which is, which is, which is handy. So the next thing we want to do is just look, change the, edit the, the, the sketch of the pad because it seems to be too close to the edge. So if we change this 0.3 millimeters that we had earlier and maybe make it say two millimeters, not three millimeters. I think two should be sufficient. So let's try two. So we'll change that to two millimeters and do the same for the other side. So if we zoom over and click on the 0.3 dimension, we could change that to um, two millimeters. And this will make sure that the pad is offset from the side sufficient, sufficiently, which will give it a, a, a size uh, more in keeping with the base. So you can see it doesn't protrude as it did previously. So now close the part and make sure you save it. And this will bring us back to the main assembly. And when we look at the main assembly now, we can see that we have the, the pad and the base with the slot is nicely positioned um, on the calipers. So we could insert another um, brake pad and um, so, but before we do that, let's make sure we save the part as an external file, because at the moment it's just a virtual part associated with the assembly. So now you could go and insert the brake pad, but we can do this very easily by just holding down the control key and dragging out the the um, the part as shown in the in the directory tree. And if we use the rotate command, we could just get it roughly in position. And once we have it in position, we could then use the mate um, command to mate the top and the sides as shown. So first of all, I just mate the top to the to the bottom of the calipers. Now the sides. And then finally, we will pick the back face of the calipers as shown. Let's zoom in there. And the back face of the um, the base here and that puts the pad and base nicely into the assembly so now we're complete so we could just zoom all here and to go to bring all all the other components we could click on the exit isolate uh, option so which is over here so click exit isolate and this bring or shows all of the components of the assembly and now we can see if we use the um, section view command how the the pads and the base fit nicely within the um, assembly. So it's very useful to be able to design within the context of an assembly as we've seen. So what we could finally do now is miss, pack, use the command pack and go. And this is very useful to make sure that all components uh, that are in this assembly are identified and saved to a particular folder, or in this case, I'm going to save it to a zip file. So this is useful if you want to take it away, the full assembly away with you and maybe work on a different PC.